I've been traveling America to try and find the answer to one question, and it's a question we've all been asking ourselves since November the 8th, 2016. How did Donald Trump win the White House. Hillary ran her campaign along the lines of identity politics. She split the electorate up into tiny little groups and she told each one she was going to put them first. Her feminist supporters said they were going to vote with their vaginas. It's a neat trick if you can hold a Byra that way. But if Hillary stood for blacks, Latinos, gays, women, what did Trump stand for? America. America first, make America great again. He stood for Americans. Oddly, if you put it that way, it sounds pretty inclusive, doesn't it? Now, most people that I've spoken to on this trip, Trump voters, Hillary voters, gay, straight, male, female, black, white, they consider themselves American first. He stood for Americans, and if you consider yourself an American, he was your man. Now. I think he was selling snake oil, you think he was selling snake oil, but the label on the bottle of snake oil said change. I don't believe he's made America great again, but he has changed America. And he's taken a flamethrower to this town and Washington will never be the same again. There are many people these days who seem to believe that by not allowing an opinion to be aired, that that somehow eradicates the opinion. It doesn't. It merely suppresses it, and that breeds resentment. There are those that refuse a robust debate about immigration or, I don't know, trans issues, because as far as they are concerned, the debate has been won, and anyone who thinks differently or isn't convinced by the argument is a bigot and therefore doesn't deserve to be heard. That breeds resentment. That breeds Trump. Trump is the result of a broken political discourse. And by not engaging in the debate, you invariably lose the debate because you haven't taken part in the debate. What I have learned is this. Well, clearly not my fucking lines, that's for sure. What I have learned is this. Every Trump voter that I have spoken to voted for him for very different reasons. Some voted for him because he's a Republican, and they always vote Republican. Some because Obama did absolutely nothing for them, and Trump promised them the world. And yes, a wall. Some of them hate women. Some of them hate black people. Most of them don't. Some of them hate Hillary. And yes, hard as it is to imagine, some of them would have voted for Bernie over Trump, given the choice. Some of them are willing to forgive Trump's pussy grabbing, but most of them simply don't care as long as he puts an extra $50 in their wage packet each week. That's the truth. They all voted for him for different reasons, but it's easier, isn't it, to assume that everyone that voted for Trump is a racist or a sexist or stupid or an apologist for a sexual abuser or an enabler of the far right. It simply isn't true. They just voted differently to how I would have voted. Very differently. But they had their reasons. Still haven't worked out exactly what they are, but uh, they had their reasons. For those of us that disagree with him, Trump is a problem that we need to solve. But we all played a part in getting him to the White House. Those that voted for him and those of us that didn't listen to those who did. You're more than welcome to assume that anyone that voted for Trump is an idiot or downright evil. But if you do that, you hand him a second term. And that is on you. That's a wrap. There we go. Can we just go for one more? Oh, fuck off.